In this lesson, we'll show how to derive the map and minimum mean square error estimators for a couple problems in which the resulting estimators are different functions of the observed data. Let's start with an example where the observation is a binomial random variable with capital M trials and a success probability equal to P. That is, the observation X is the number of successes in M independent trials, each with a success probability equal to P. The observation then will be an integer in the interval from 0 to M. Furthermore, Let's assume that the success probability is an unknown random parameter that has the probability distribution that looks like this over the interval between 0 and 1. Now this particular distribution is an example of the beta distribution and has a shape that looks like this. Evidently then, our prior model for the success probability is such that we believe it is more likely to be near 1 half than it is to be near 0 or 1. If, for instance, this example corresponded to several tosses of a coin. This particular prior corresponds to a model in which we believe it is more likely for the coin to be fair than it is for it to be unfair. Our goal now is to estimate the success probability from an observation of the number of successes in M trials. Well, for the MAP estimator, or the maximum of the posterior, We'll estimate the success probability as the value for the parameter p between 0 and 1 that maximizes the log likelihood. And this log likelihood has a couple of terms that correspond to the condition to terms in the conditional probability uh, mass function for the observation. And it has a couple of terms that correspond to the to terms in the prior density for the parameter. It also has other terms that do not depend on the parameter and therefore don't matter for the optimization problem. These terms, of course, also include the unconditional probability mass function for the observation, which is part of the overall expression for the posterior density for the parameter. Now to solve this particular optimization problem, we can differentiate the objective function with respect to the parameter and then solve for the value of the parameter that sets the derivative equal to zero. The MAP estimator, then, is equal to the number of observed successes, plus 1, divided by the number of trials, plus 2. Now this value for the estimator is always between 0 and 1, so the constraint for the parameter is satisfied. And by looking at the second derivative of this objective function, we could verify that this value is indeed a maximum of the posterior. Now, to find the minimum mean square error estimator, we'll need to determine the posterior density function, which means we'll need to find the unconditional probability for the observation, which we find by integrating the product of the conditional probability for the observation times the prior. Then, once we have that, we can find the minimum mean square error estimator by evaluating the expected value of the posterior density, or the conditional mean for the parameter. Now both of the integrals that we need to evaluate can be evaluated by using the relationship that the integral of p raised to the power a times 1 minus p raised to the power b integrated from 0 to 1 is this ratio of gamma functions. Now when a and b are integers, the gamma function evaluated at a plus 1 would be a factorial. Gamma function at b plus 1 would be b factorial. And that would lead to the result that the minimum mean square error estimator is the number of observed successes plus 2 divided by the number of trials plus 4. Therefore, we see that the map and the minimum mean square error estimators are different for this problem. Note that without using the prior distribution for the success probability, we'd likely estimate the success probability as the ratio of the number of successes to the number of trials, x over m. But because we're using a prior that favors a success probability that's close to one half, both of these estimators will tend to move the estimate toward one half. For a large number of trials, these estimators will be similar, but for a smaller number of trials, the estimates they provide could be significantly different. 
Now recall that the map estimator corresponds to optimizing an objective function that minimizes the uniform cost for errors, whereas, as its name suggests, the minimum mean square error minimizes the squared error. Now for another example, let's suppose that the unknown random parameter is modeled as the square of a Gaussian random variable that has zero mean and a standard deviation of sigma y. Then let's suppose that conditional on a, the observation x is an exponential random variable with a mean equal to the value that a takes. Well, to apply Bayesian estimation methods, we'll need to specify the prior for the parameter a. To do that, we'll begin by specifying the cumulative distribution function for this parameter, which is the probability that it takes a value less than or equal to some number a, lowercase a. And then, because a is the square of a Gaussian random variable, the probability that a is less than this lowercase a is the probability that y squared is less than that value. And that's equal to the probability that the absolute value for y is less than or equal to the square root of that value, which is the integral of the density for y from negative square root of a to the positive square root of a. And because the density for y is symmetric about 0, we can evaluate this as twice the integral from 0 to the square root of a. Now, to obtain the prior density for the parameter a, we would differentiate this cumulative distribution function with respect to a, which, based on the integral expression for the cumulative distribution, gives us an expression that depends directly on the density for the underlying random variable y, which, because y is modeled as a Gaussian random variable, gives us this expression for the prior density for a. Its dependence on a has a factor of a in the exponent and a factor of square root of a in the denominator. Well, next we'd need to specify the observation model, which is the density for the observation, conditional on the unknown random parameter. And because the observation is conditionally an exponential with a mean equal to the value for a, this allows us to specify the mathematical form for this density, which is an exponential density function. Now, with the observation and prior density specified, we can set up an optimization problem for the map estimator, keeping in mind that both the unknown parameter a and the observation x are non-negative random variables. Well, this objective function is defined by the logarithm of the posterior, which for this example contains four terms that depend on the parameter and several other terms that don't. Well, the first term comes from the leading term in the observation density. The second term comes from the exponent in the observation density. The third term comes from the leading term in the prior density. The fourth term comes from the exponential term in the prior density, and the other terms are all of the things that do not depend on the parameter a. Now to solve for the map estimator, we could differentiate this cost function with respect to the parameter a and set that derivative equal to zero, which after some algebraic manipulation would give us a quadratic equation to solve for a. Now because the parameter a and the observation x are non-negative, we'd select the non-negative root from the quadratic equation solution to get an expression for the map estimator. Now to solve for the minimum mean square error estimator, we'd need to evaluate the unconditional density for the observation. Then we'll be able to evaluate the posterior density for the parameter conditional on the observation from which we'd be able to evaluate the conditional mean for the posterior density, which provides the minimum mean square error estimator. Now at this point, we have a calculus problem that may or may not be tractable. Now you could approach this problem by hand or by using symbolic or numerical tools such as MATLAB and Mathematica. To address this example, I've chosen to use Mathematica and I'll show you the segment of code that I use. Well, after clearing the variables that I plan to use, first I set up the function that defines the prior density. Then I set up a function that defines the conditional observation density. 
Then I perform the integral to evaluate the unconditional observation density. Then I specify the posterior density from those quantities, those functions. And then I'm able to evaluate the conditional mean for the posterior density, which defines the minimum mean square error estimator. Well, this turns out to be sigma y times the square root of 2 times the observed value. Now, for comparison, we can see the difference between the two estimators. Now, how we decide which one is best is a question we'll address in subsequent lessons, but we can now note that by its definition, the minimum mean square error estimator will have a lower mean square error cost than the MAP estimator, but the MAP estimator will have a lower uniform error cost than the minimum mean square error estimator. Now, to get a graphical comparison of the two, we might normalize the observation and the estimate by the variance parameter sigma y squared. And if we do that, we get two expressions that relate the observation normalized by the variance to the estimate normalized by the variance. And then we could plot the normalized estimators to see that the minimum mean square error estimator, the one in red, will provide a larger estimate than the MAP estimator. Well, these examples should demonstrate the basic approach to deriving the MAP and minimum mean square error estimators for the estimation of random parameters.